Kato was born on the 15th of November 1938 in Cedar Valley, St. Thomas, Jamaica, to parents Miami and Philemon Grant. Mum was one of 12 children and went to Mount Vernon Primary School and continued at Cedar Valley Secondary School. Mum remained in the family home. This was when Mum found a love for sewing. Wherever, whenever her mum and dad put clothes away, mum would find them, cut them up, and make them into new designs for her brothers and sisters. She also tried to make little dolls in her own little fashion. That's when her mum sent her to a lady called Elsie Morgan, who taught her how to sew. Mum came to England in 1960 and met our dad, Altiman Mundell, and got married and had five children, Dean, Sharon, Valerie, Pauline, and James, who sadly passed away at a very young age. Mum continued to work as a seamstress until a brain tumour and her partially, she became partially blind, led her to another direction. Once on the road to recovery, she was not able, she was unable to sew as well as she used to, but she still tried when she can. Mum started to look after children, child-minding, and became very well known, providing love and care for numerous babies and toddlers. Mum was what we would call one of the original old school Christians that practiced her faith religiously church on Sunday mornings and evenings, Saturdays for convention and other churches, prayer meeting and Bible studies during the week, and she also made sure we all came with her. <laughs> Mum was known for her beautiful smile, high cheekbones, quiet demeanor, and a wit that only the selected few would witness. Um, for example, if anyone asked Mum for a couple of pounds, Mum's response would be, Oh, where do you get it from? Do you give me some people down? <laughs> we don't have none. At this time, Mom's purse was bursting with money that she had collected. <laughs> She'll smile and then tell us to go and fetch her purse. Another example is when my niece Lanray had a very short haircut, um, Lanray asked her, Oh, Mom, Nana, do you like it? Mom said, Hmm, it's alright, but your head big. <laughs> If you and Andre was walking down the road, they would know that you are brothers and sisters because both your head beats. <laughs> Another example, when my cousin Sonia came down once to see us all, um, Mum was watching one of her soaps, but secretly listening to our conversations. Occasionally you would see Mum smile and laugh and do a little secret giggle. I asked Mum, oh Mum, what's happening in the soap then? Mum would say, I don't know. <laughs> this was because Mum was busy listening to our conversation and soaking up all the information. Up you know to Sonia, when Sonia left, Mum said, Oh, is that what the young people do now? <laughs> I never know. <laughs> I could only laugh at that. Mum also had very great carers who thought Mum was a sweet, quiet lady. Little did they know that if they were late, Mum would say, it's within there, then we might as well just turn around and go back home. <laughs> I said, okay, Mum, you tell them that when they come. Mum would say, no. <laughs> and laugh. And also, any conversations that they had, Mum would soak it up. But don't worry, Mum never told us anything. She still has that information. Mum was the glue that kept the family together and we will continue to carry that on because we are very close as a family. We support each other, we do just as much for Mum um, and we basically all love each other. Um, we are very, very close. Mum left behind her children, grandchildren, a great-grandchild, dear friends and of course, um, Oh, however, mum is going to meet up with her dearly departed husband, her mum and dad, their son, siblings and friends. And of course, we miss her with all our hearts.
Hey, what's it done? <laughs> Exactly. <laughs>